Six-year-old Jesse Lewis was looking forward to Christmas. He was his usual self, happy, full of energy. That when his dad dropped him off at Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14th, five years ago. That final image sticks with his father. Also, a message that Jesse had written on a chalkboard at home inspired his mom to create an educational movement in the aftermath of the tragedy. Our senior political producer, Karen McBride, has more. Thanks, Rich. Scarlett Lewis and Neil Heslin lost their son, Jesse, that fateful day. But Jesse's legacy lives on through the many things they've done to honor him and to help other people. I met Scarlett and Neil in Stanford at a playground named after their son. Scarlett and Neil, it's been five years now since that fateful day when you lost your son. And certainly your lives have changed dramatically in this time. And from the outside, we've seen so many of the amazing things that you've done, the wonderful things you've done to help people. Tell us what we don't see. What's going on inside these past five years? For me, it's been, last week has been very hard. And, and uh, Jesse's constantly on my mind, flashbacks of that day. Uh, or that week, I should say. And just, very, very sad. I've been asked what it's like to lose a child. And uh, I think I've thought a lot about how to explain it. And I think that um, it must be like, because I, I don't know what it's like to lose a limb, but something that is a part of you that you were born with, that you're supposed to have, and that you it's your go-to thing that you need and uh, like I would think like losing your left arm I'm left-handed right so um, you have phantom pains evidently you know that you look and it's not there but it's excruciatingly painful anyway and I'm sure that that you would reach out to use it and uh, and it's not there right so it's it's something that's natural that should be there that's not and so I kind of feel like that's uh, that's how it is to lose a child you know five years later it's still really unbelievable, um, that kind of thing. Um, having your child viciously murdered in, in their classroom, that happens to other people. Those are people on the cover of People magazine that you see as you go through uh, the, the checkout line at the grocery store and you really don't want to look, right? Those are those people, but it never happens to, never, never happened to you, right? Uh, except it did. Neil, you've told me about Jesse and the weeks before that tragic day, how excited he was about Christmas coming, and he said this was going to be the best Christmas ever. At this time of year, how do you get through these days? Well, what Scarlett said is like losing a limb. Is, it's a good way of describing what it is to lose a child. Um, I, uh, I often think you know, in the car, turn around to look for Jesse. Uh, it's, you just expect him to still be there or be there. It's, it's, it's very hard. It's it, coming up five years. It seems like it gets harder and harder every day. Um, what really sticks with me or, or echoes in my mind resonates is Jesse was six and a half when he was murdered. And now it's it's five years. It's ninety percent of Jesse's life that he was was here with us. And uh, I think the sixth or the seventh year will be will really really be hard because he'll he'll have been gone longer than he was with us. Um, it's. Uh, there's just never really any closure or, or calmness to what happened, because I think mostly because it's such a publicized and unfathomable uh, tragedy. It's uh, just, just no way to put, word, put, put it in words. On that fateful day, Jesse showed courage beyond his six years. During a brief pause in the gunfire, he told his classmates to run. Jesse said run, and they did. Two of them ran into the bathroom, and the other nine ran out of the classroom and are here today. And, uh, you know, 
incredibly proud of him for what he did, but every time I speak of it, I, I get teary-eyed and choked up. Despite their immeasurable loss and the enduring pain, Jesse's family has worked tirelessly to both honor their son's memory and to help others. Neil has created a scholarship in his son's name. Which is an endowment, which is awarded every year to a, a student at Shelton High School. Um, which ironically today I received an email from the young girl who received the first scholarship. She's at Duke University and she'll be graduating uh, this year, well it's her fourth year at Duke. So, uh, you know, it's rewarding to see that and know that he was able to, his, something in his memory was able to help and send somebody to school and give him that little extra support. And, uh, but it's nice and it's a warm feeling to know that she remembers Jesse. Jesse's brother, JT, who's 17 now, has found his own way to deal with his loss. At 12 years old, started an organization called Newtown Helps Rwanda after orphan genocide survivors from Rwanda reached out to him and told him that he was going to be okay and feel joy again following his experience and talked about how they got through their genocide and losing their parents and siblings. And, uh, and so in response to that, in response to that love, he wanted to extend his own love and he started an organization called Newtown Helps Rwanda. And uh, he was able to send a couple of the orphan genocide survivors to university. He's helped build self-sustaining fish ponds in Uganda for former children's soldiers. He's, he's helped a lot of severely traumatized kids in Connecticut. And the amazing thing about that is that JT is healing himself by healing others. And Scarlett has done a number of things in Jesse's name. She is most passionate about the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Foundation and a program she's created that is focused on social and emotional learning. Her inspiration came from a message Jesse wrote shortly before his death. He wrote three words on our kitchen chalkboard shortly before he died that I found following his murder, nurturing, healing, love. And those three words we found out are in the definition of compassion across all cultures. And obviously not something that a, a, a six-year-old would normally say, um, phonetically spelled because he was in first grade and just learning to write. But I knew instantly that if the shooter, Adam Lanza, in our case, had been able to give and receive nurturing, healing love, that the tragedy would never have happened. I knew that I would be spending the rest of my life spreading that message, and I knew that I had to get that message into schools. That was my main priority. And so within the last five years, actually within the last year and a half, we have launched a free, comprehensive, pre-K through 12th grade social and emotional learning program called the Choose Love Enrichment Program. And within, it teaches, it teaches uh, students and their educators how to choose love in every situation. And in the last year and a half, it's been downloaded in 48 states and over 30 countries. A lot of what we're seeing in our society is, uh, is, is anger uh, that turns into violence, but it's based on pain, underlying pain. So it's, it's really up to us to address that pain. And, uh, and I, I believe that uh, our program addresses that by giving kids the skills and tools that they need to cope, to have resilience, to have healthy and positive relationships, to be able to manage their emotions, and uh, bottom line, to be able to feel kindness, caring, and concern for themselves and others. As a parent, I just don't know if I could do this. Where do you get the strength and the courage? The loss of a child, no matter how you lose that child, is the same, I believe, but under the circumstances of how Jesse was murdered and being such a publicized tragedy, uh, it just magnifies and it's a rippling effect. And it's amazing and to see the people that, that know Jesse and know Jesse's story I've been halfway around the world that people recognize who I am and come up to me and just give me a hug um, with tears in their eyes. It's, it's just so emotional. I, uh, something I, you can't really explain. Um, 
but I I know that like I said to to live your life you have to be able to accept what happened and uh, once you can do that, at least for, for me, I was able to go on with my life. I, I didn't forget about Jesse. I think of him hundreds of times a day. But, uh, you know, the, the years I have left, I want to be able to be happy and enjoy those years. So many times and so often I find myself reflecting and thinking Jesse's still here. It's a strange feeling. I agree. I knew that I didn't want um, my surviving son's life to be defined by this. Um, I wanted him to go on and have a joyful life. And so I knew I had to model that. And of course, Jesse's last message to his brother that he left on JT's desk, folded up, and it was about this big. Um, he told JT to have a lot of fun. You know, and so to honor Jesse's life, that's what we try to do, and uh, that's what we ask people to do. Still, December 14th will always weigh heavy. I dropped Jesse off that day and walked him into the school at 9.04. And, uh, you know, I remember him giving me a hug and saying goodbye, saying, uh, I love you. And then he stopped and said, Love mom too, you know, which was really out of kind of out of character there at the time because Scarlett wasn't there, and uh, and then he said everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, right? Prior to that, he gave me a hug, which I still to this day can feel, and uh, walking in with him, him holding my finger, and uh, just you know when I have survivor guilt over it. I feel like I walked him to to his death. I know I did what I was supposed to do. Um, I just wish I was there that day. You know, traditionally. I just either to die with him or die saving, trying to save him. He was where he was supposed to be by law, and I think it underlies the the fact the necessity that our schools absolutely have to be a safe haven for our educators and students and and we know how to make them that way we just need the courage to change and do it and that's that's um, implementing a social emotional learning program it's the number one way to have a safe school environment you bring your child to school and drop them off Scarlett plans to further her movement and is hopeful her message will continue to resonate. I think it's really important to understand that we can all be a part of the solution to the issues that are going on, including school safety. Um, I think sometimes we'd like for there to be other people that would come in and solve this for us. Uh, however, uh, that's not the case. We've had over 220 school-related shootings since Sandy Hook Elementary School, so we have one per week, and they're all preventable. And, uh, and so I think it's time that we take responsibility for what's going on with kids all over the country and do something about it. I invite everyone to join the movement to choose love and, and help me do it. I mean, that's my mission in life, and, uh, and I, I don't want anybody to ever have to suffer the way that we have. Thank you very much, Karen. And for more information on the foundation Scarlett spoke about, please visit jessielewischooselove.org. When we come back, the director of the documentary called Newtown. It is the story of the aftermath of that shooting and how a community dealing with grief comes together and shows resilience. <laughs> 